Okay. All right. Um, because with percentages, you're making percentage of the available space. Maybe this will be clear. Let's, let's make this a background of yellow. Let's make the width of this 60%. Let's make the width of this 60%. And let's put a little border on it. So, we go and save this. And look at it. All right. The yellow is the portion of the total width of the screen that that picture div takes up. So that's 60%. Um, the border didn't seem to work. I'm not sure what I did. Is it because it, uh, I don't know why. We'll forget the border. You know, to me, it almost looks like you need, in terms of the mobile ones, you need like thicker borders because. Yeah, let's not, let's just not worry about that. All right. The, the, um, because I, I mean, my job here isn't to, to show the border. My job is to show you really the width of it. And I guess we can see what the width is. The width of the image is 60% of its available space, right? So. The yellow is 60% of the whole screen. The image is 60% of the div, of the yellow. So that becomes roughly like 36% of the whole screen. And if you look, that's approximately a third of the screen. All right, the image takes up. The width of the image takes up about a third of the screen because it takes up 60% of 60%. So where the yellow box um, is going is where the image is present and the CSS. Well, that yellow box, no, is the picture. Oh, that's just the picture? That's the picture. And that takes up 60% of its available space. Its available space is the whole screen. All right? The image then takes up 60% of that. All right? Um, let's make this 100% now. And save it. Now notice, except for the little thingy down there, you don't really see the yellow. But the picture doesn't take up the full screen. Why not? Well, we said the picture div takes up 60% of the screen, and the image takes up 100% of that 60%. All right? So if we wanted it to literally take up the whole screen, with this structure, we'd have to make the picture div take up 100% and the picture itself take up 100% of that 100%. And so that would be 100% of the screen. All right. And you actually had not 100%, but something like 95.83. Yeah, I think that's what I calculated. Alright, and so now we're, we're back to that. Right. So do you follow now how that image, why you have to set the div and the image? Mm -hmm. You specify how much space you want the div to take, how much, how much of that do you want the image to take? Because keep in mind, again, there could be a bunch of things in that div. In our case, we only have that one image. But we could have other images, each one we want to take up half the div. Three images, each one we want to take a third of the div. We could have four images, each one we want to take up half the div, so we have a two by two grid. All right. It just depends on what the content is inside of that. Okay. Now, would it, for the first picture div, now would it be incorrect if for you originally assigned the picture a fixed number of Pixels versus percentage? Yeah, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be right. Because uh, then what if you're on a bigger screen? All right. If, if, for example, we define the width, let's define the width as 320 pixels of that picture div. Everything up. Maybe with this 
this isn't isn't three hundred or uh, isn't uh, three twenty pixel density. Uh, okay, it's a greater pixel density that might be messing me up. But the, the bottom line is no. For mobile things, you want to use a, a relative size because there is such variance in uh, the screens of mobile devices. All right. So we got that. Let's look at our desktop version. Our desktop version, I would imagine we would do the same thing. All right, as we did here. Oh, you know what? I put that in the wrong place. That was supposed to go on my handheld style sheet. Now let's look at the desktop one. Oh. It's a handheld screen. Links vertically oriented. The other thing I would then suggest doing is that info, again, instead of floating right, floating at left. And that moves that closer. And then playing again with the margins and padding, you can make it tighter uh, if you wanted to. Now, the one issue that I see with both of these, all right, is that both of these approaches are the graceful degradation one. They're not the mobile first. I don't know if that was intentional or you're still working through that or or what. I um, because you said to continue. You said. Um, the, the lab two was a work off of lab one, mm -hmm. and you, and then in class you said um, you said once you get the first one done, it will be easier to do the second because you just copy over the code and just change it. So I I did that, and I, I don't know I didn't know if it was really mobile first, but okay. Now uh, again, mobile first. What's different about mobile first? What's different about mobile first is we're going to do things the reverse way. All right. First of all, we're likely going to end up with the same or very similar results. All right. Uh, mobile first is partly a philosophy in that think of the way you want the mobile site to work first, then think of things that you want to add on to it. All right. Add on to that. Let's make a copy of this. But in order to do that, you would you have to restart the whole thing? No. With the week two assignment, you, it was the intent was is that you would do it with that, and then go and apply it to the first one. Okay, so the week two assignment you were supposed to start. Right. Okay. Right. All right. So let's go in and open the mobile first here. And the mobile first is going to say sort of the opposite of this. All right. Here we're saying apply the desktop style sheet and then use the style sheet for the handheld to tweak and, you know, um, change around aspects of the desktop design that we don't want on the mobile. All right, that's a graceful degradation. Here's our site, and we're going to trim it down for the mobile. 
The mobile first philosophy would say this. This is a style sheet that I want to apply in all cases. I can get rid of the media query, or I can say handheld or screen. And then I can say the opposite, because this is a screen one. I'm going to use the handheld as the base, and I'm going to enhance it with the screen style sheet. So I'll say instead of maximum device width, minimum device width, 481. in approach and it's a difference when you design. In one case you say I'm going to make a style sheet for the desktop and then I'm going to write a style sheet for the mobile that trims things down. Gets rid of some things maybe, repositions things, whatever. All right. The other approach is to say well I'm going to take um, and start with the mobile. Start with the bare bones site. Get that working, and then I'm going to add some things on. And whether they be added on via JavaScript or via a CSS media query, you can get, then go and add things on. All right? Ideally, you end up in the same place. All right? or, or you should end up in the same place. All right? um, but, again, it, it's sort of good because instead of thinking, like throwing everything in and whittling it down for the mobile site, you start off sort of lean and mean and just come up with a basic bare bones design and then you enhance it uh, to look better on a desktop environment. All right, questions about this. Um, so I, I think you're all set with this then? Um, or, or let me, I'm asking you that. I'm not saying I think you are. Are you all set with this or do you have questions remaining? I, I think. I if okay. I had questions, it would, I would run into it in the lab. Okay. All right. So, so you at least know sort of where to start, and, mm -hmm. and we can go from there and see if you have uh, questions yeah. uh, about that. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Um, all right. This is a good review. If I, if I was doing this course over again, keeping in mind this is the first time I'm teaching this course, I probably would have spent a little more time reviewing CSS. Because depending on what you've done and your background and how much you've worked on CSS, um, a lot of these floating things and, and fluid designs, more fluid designs, people find tricky. So some people, you know, some people I have a grasp on it immediately. Other people I think need a little brushing up on it for that. All right. Um, there's two additional things that, that are in the book. Um, and I gave an example of one, I think the one class um, where I really sort of went off topic. Uh, and that is using JavaScript to do stuff, all right? And I do want to pull that up. And there's any number of ways you can do it. There's, there's uh, some JavaScript code in the book. Um, and I may have, may have actually copied that. Or I may have found on the web a script to do that. And the other way, the other thing uh, that I mentioned is the hack that you sort of need to do for
for Internet Explorer because earlier versions of Internet Explorer don't get the um, media queries right. Does anyone have their textbook with them? can be the div with buttons. This can be the div with drop down. All right. Never mind my important, less important. You'd give them more descriptive names. If the width is less than 400, we make the div with buttons invisible, the div with the drop down visible. If, we, if it is um, not less than 400, we make the 
drop down invisible and we make the um, buttons visible. So, just by adapting that code, Alright, at a certain size it will be, be showing the div with buttons. At a certain point, we get the div with the drop down. The idea is, is when you do things in JavaScript, you sort of take control of, of anything. Alright, um, you're not really limited to... Uh, you know, you're, you're not really limited. You can, you can create new content on the page. You can show versus hide content. You have a lot of possibilities, a lot of potential with that. Uh, the one thing to realize, though, is that if you hide content, you're still downloading that content. All right? So, for example, if you go and you hide the div with buttons in it, you're still downloading those buttons. All right, you're still downloading those images because that content is there. All right, um, it's just not being visible. So you, you can get that. And, and they talk about that in the book, and they talk about that tool that you can use to analyze that and see exactly what's getting downloaded. So JavaScript is your other tool that we didn't really spend a lot about, but I encourage you to, to experiment with, uh, with that. And if there's something specific that you want to do, um, let me know. Really, the advantage of JavaScript is that um, you're not limited to just the stuff of, 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 uh, of CSS. You know, you could do a lot of different things. Um, you, know, uh, you know, you can write your coding very precisely to do some very specific things, and you have a great deal of control to, to configure the page the way you want it to be. Questions at this point? That uh, one you just altered, could, could that be put into the assignments folder for us to, to play with it? Uh, yeah, the, the one's already out there. I'll put the other one up, though. I'll, I'll put the second one up. Yeah, like I said, because yeah. I've been, like you said, the samples of it uh, we've yeah. been looking at, um, I have seen that, like you said, content. Right. going away at a certain point, so it's right. definitely intriguing. Right. So, again, yeah, I'll, I'll post that up to the, I'll actually post that to the lectures folder, okay. and then you can, you can take a look at it there. Now, the sad thing about web development, all right, we got enough challenges in web development, even if this was a perfect world. Right? Because even if it was a perfect world and everyone had screaming fast internet and all that, we have the challenge of how something's going to look on a little phone versus a big screen. Right? It's just a, a real estate issue. It's just not enough space you know, on the little phone compared to the big screen. All right. So I'm going to make a statement. And the truth of the matter is, that many sites, I think the book says most, many sites have actually two versions. They have a desktop version and a mobile version. Does that mean I've been lying to you for three weeks and, and talking about adaptive and all that? No. All right? What I want to do now is, this is our next topic. Our next topic is, is to consider the situation of where there needs to be two web pages and then talk about on a technical level how we do that. All right. What are the advantages and disadvantages of writing a responsive page versus simply having two versions of the page? two versions, we have two versions. <laughs> All right? So there could be, you know, in 
increased work to create because double sites. You're doing everything double. Any other potential downsides of that? Let's keep my potential. Not necessarily that there'd be a problem. I'm going to rephrase this this way, that there may be double the work. If you update one, when you update the other? Yeah. There's a potential that they can be inconsistent. things that you can do to keep these from really being a problem. All right? Keep these from really being a problem. Because that's a big issue. We don't want to have to do double work. All right? We recognize that we're going to have to do more work because we're maintaining two sites. But we don't want it to literally be double. And you have to change it here, you have to change it there. All right? And we definitely don't want to run into a case where we have inconsistencies, where one web page says one thing, a different web page, just because you're viewing it on mobile, says something else. So we want to mitigate these problems. So these are sort of the, the traps. I won't say they're problems, because if we're clever, we can, we can get around these. But these are the traps. Yes? Wouldn't there be times, really, where you would want the mobile to really be radically different? Where, for example, a, a business site that has tons of products right. for the screen, but when it comes to the mobile, oh, yeah. couldn't you rationally think, hey, I'm just, I want the phone number for the salesman, and what's the hot special today? And that's really it. I mean, be radically different than the mega menu so to speak, with okay. full screen. Uh, I mean, okay. is that a, I guess, a rational approach for one where you do want bipolar designs? Okay. All right. So, that comes to the advantages. And as was stated, if the design of the mobile is radically different, then it might just be better, instead of trying to shoehorn some clever combination of CSS and JavaScript into some gigantic maintenance nightmare to generate two totally different pages, to just write two different pages, right? Um, essentially what you're doing, you know, with either the responsive design or the mobile first is you're saying, I'm going to take one page and I'm going to like tweak it under certain circumstances, all right? And if all you're talking about is tweaking something, like t instead of two columns, there's one column, then, yeah, that approach works. So maybe you don't need two versions. Maybe the responsive techniques work pretty well in that kind of case. Or maybe even portions of the site, the responsive things work best in that. But if you have stuff that's radically different, all right, if you have pages that you deliberately want to be radically different, now you still don't want them to be inconsistent, right? They can be different, but they ought to be consistent. In other words, if you have the sales rep's phone number on one page, it better be the same on the other page, all right? But it can be different. It can not show projects and all that. At some point, it becomes a bigger pain to try to take one design and tweak it for radically different. Just make two pages, <laughs> you know, instead of having your one size fits all. All right? Now, under what situation would you say that two sites are liable to be radically different? You gave, you gave a, a good example um, of, of maybe uh, an organization